was such a dad. Yeah. Yeah. If you think about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and uncle with just all uncle. the contraptions oh, he was making. The oh, homemade my jet so ski. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And as yeah, the, one of our favorite stories, as we've all talked about, is the time that he decided to go to the Spokane Public Library and find out every single park in the city limits of Spokane and decided to take one Labor Day and took his two kids and saw every single park. <laughs> there are 87 days. parks in Spokane and he did every single one with his kids. They kept a journal of like yeah. they, they had well, a, ra rating a rating system. system. That's right. That's yes. so Amos. They, they had a rating system. <laughs> he got that RV with the kids. Oh, oh yeah. And it was just this really the old. And then he, he would take all the yeah. nieces and nephews around, even just around the blocks in Spokane. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna and, go on an old RV yeah. ride. Yeah. 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 He was just the crazy fun Uncle Amos. Well, even like the, his field of dreams or at the ranch. Oh right. The ranch was yes, a big part pond. of his yeah. life, and right. the pond. Yes. yes. And he built that field of dreams. He that wanted he a big base. Baseball park. Yes. Yeah, so right? he built a baseball park yeah. at Mom and Dad's at the ranch, ranch. Yeah. <laughs> so that he the just, kids could be out there yeah. and, they'd, oh, and they had hot dogs and yeah, he had friends out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the pumpkin chucker yeah, thing. Yeah, he loved playing. Yeah. Them. Setting up all those things. Oh, remember the time that Halloween, um, his daughter was about nine, and it was Halloween. Oh. He shows up at my house. She wanted to be Little Bull Peep for Halloween. Oh, that's <laughs> right. He got a, he got a sheep. Oh, oh, a real sheep. Yeah, a real yeah. Sheep. yeah. He and she yeah. went from door to door with, with a sheep on a leash. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and a really uh, beloved attorney. Yes. Talking to some of his clients oh. after he passed, they just, he was part Without of the family. Yeah. They, he, he really took such good care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they did, they considered him a family mm -hmm. member. They did. He never missed a Valentine's Day with the three oh. of us. Incredible. And with mom. And it's going to make me cry now because yeah. mm -hmm. that meant so much to me. Yeah. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't yep. mean to cry, but I just always yeah. Whatever knew. city we lived in, yeah. wherever he lived, he, he found always... a way to either deliver flowers, mm -hmm. chocolates, a card. Yeah. Yeah. He was my little brother, you know. And I was, I wanted to just care for him and to be able to have him there and not in the hospital yeah. was, was huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. He didn't get COVID and we were able to have lots mm -hmm. of people into the house and of course his kids, that was so important that his kids could be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, as that month progressed, honestly, we didn't really talk about hospice and we knew, we all knew about hospice. We knew about palliative care, but in Amos's case, he, at that point, he was such a fighter, and it wasn't because he himself was afraid of dying. We talked about, you know, he talked about dying. He was not afraid of dying. He knew that he was going to be in heaven, and but for his kids, he was just such a fighter. And um, so the month wore on that way, and we did everything we could with palliative care. And I, I was afraid, honestly, I was afraid to even bring up the word hospice, even though I knew that could be a really good thing for him. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point, really that last night, and he had a horrible night. By then it was three, four in the morning, I went in, talked to Amos again, and I said, Amos, we just need some pain management for you. And again, I hate to admit it, but I actually, I didn't say the word hospice. I just, I thought that meant I was giving up on him, or it, you know, I didn't want him to give up. And um, he said yes. And so I made a call about, it was by then four or five in the morning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on a Sunday morning. And I've never forgotten it because that voice, hospice on the other end, uh, was such a godsend. And I immediately felt such a sense of relief. This person was so kind and compassionate. Mm -hmm. Not sure who I talked to, but wow, were they amazing and just sort of talking me through what was going on. And she just immediately reassured me that mm -hmm. it's going to be okay and we're going to get you the help you need. Mm -hmm. And I've just never been so grateful in my life. Yeah. And I picked up the phone. I called you in Seattle. I called you. I called his kids, called mom and dad. And I said, we're going to get some help. And I think the thing that I struggled with the most that where hospice helped me was just trying to strike a balance between fighting and letting go. Mm -hmm. And when is the moment when you can finally let go and not feel like you're actually being defeated? Yeah. 
and, we're and, giving up. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and just knowing that, and I remember when I talked to someone at hospice, mm -hmm. they always said, don't worry, it happens organically, and you'll mm -hmm. know when the right time is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what stuck with me was, mm -hmm. okay, I, I think I do understand this, and, yeah. and we can decide when the right time is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And knowing that there's this period of time where you feel like, are we doing something too soon? Or are we not serving him yeah. well? Yes. And then yeah. Yes. Yeah. after it was all over and you look back on it and you say, we did everything right. Yeah, I think you know? so too. And, and we knew the timing. Mm -hmm. And the main thing mm -hmm. is that he, I really feel feel that once he was pain free, yeah. Oh. Yeah. and we were all finally together. Yeah. Oh. And, and holding his hand. Holding his hand. We and couldn't have done that yes. if he was in the hospital yeah, because he of was, COVID. Mm -hmm. Our mom got to hug him, and yeah. I know his he... best friend got there. His oh, yeah. ex-wife yeah. was there. His, <laughs> Everyone was his there. Kids One were big there. happy family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing, not so happy, actually. but <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it was. We could not have had uh -huh. that in a different environment, and we no. could not have had that had he not had the intervention he needed. That's yeah. right. And yeah. we were not qualified no. to do that. No. no. I think if I had 60 seconds with someone um, who hadn't experienced hospice or didn't know what it was about, I think I would emphasize the fact that it is, it's all about the person that's leaving this world, mm -hmm. but it's equally about the family. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm. Because the family needs hospice. It's not about just death with dignity and it's all those things, but mm -hmm. it's because we don't know how to handle certain situations and, and hospice can come in and train us <laughs> yeah. and, and help us and, and understand that it's also about how we're going to feel mm -hmm. the next day. Okay. And also know that there's so, many, there's so much more to just the moment where someone passes. It's everything that leads up to it. And when someone is grieving or suffering, if the person's in pain or the family's in pain, they're not thinking rationally. So leave it to the professionals. Yeah. And, and know Absolutely. that it's, it's so much more holistic than mm -hmm. just about one person. Mm -hmm. It's about the whole family. 